Good day, friends. It is me, HL Mod Tech, and I'm back once again with the Monport 40 watt laser. Friends, I found something I want to adjust on the back, so let's get cracking. All right, everybody. So obviously we're in the back, and look at that. That cable is badly pinched. I turned it on, and I saw that there actually was no flow. So friends, let me show you the fix. This was designed in Tinkercad. I'll take you inside to show you how it was made. It simply slides on the hose and then slides in the hole. And now you have got a non-crimped hose. How slick is that? This was the first prototype. It obviously was not as good. Once again, you can see how that is pinched. Bingo, this design slides in. I'll show you on my printer, it prints in about 20 minutes. And bingo, we have a solution. Let me show you how it looks with it flowing. Boom, you can see the water going through there just like it was supposed to. Once again, prints in about 20 minutes. Let me show you how to build it. Friends, we are back in the lab and I'm in Tinkercad. If you've never used Tinkercad before, I'll make sure there's a link. When you first sign in, I always choose sign in with Google. Over here is where we would make a new 3D design. Now I've already created this, so let me show you how. I'm gonna click Tinker This. And then as you can see, my project has loaded. Now friends, this is the final version. These are attempts. This is how I always work is I just play and explore as I come up with a solution. This one is kind of comical. I actually did 3D print this one and it was way too tiny. I didn't read this correctly and I thought it was giving me the radius, which I'm going to show you is what happens over here. So I totally misguessed how big that hole needed to be. Friends, let me show you how easy it is to build this little awesome part. And then we'll actually send it to the printer so you can see how it turns out. Friends, the first thing I did was bring out a tube. And I'll ungroup this so you can actually see the actual pieces. So this is that tube. I knew I wanted it to be a little less than 15, so that's why I sent it to 7.4 millimeters. I did the wall thickness of one, so that way it would have a decent wall as it printed. And then I always make the sides all the way to 64, so it's smooth. Friends, the next piece I want to set right here, and the way to do that is to put the work plane on that spot. So see how this pipe lands right there? That's why. It's because I put the work plane and said, yo, this is where the next piece goes. So then I need to search for the bent pipe. This tool is magical. When you type bent, it'll come out. Notice it is laying the wrong way, so we need to practice rotation. Now the first thing I want to do is stand it up. Right here is the handle for standing it up. If you keep the mouse inside this blue circle, it goes 22 and a half degrees. If you come outside, it does one degree at a time. So we want to stay inside, go to 90, press D to drop, and boom, it's at the right height. Now this is the rotation handle to spin it around. So I'm gonna just do this. Once again, staying inside the circle, not outside. So that it goes 90 degrees, you could also just type the 90. Now we do know we need to change this outer pipe width to 14.8, which is 7.4 times two. And then I want that wall thickness to also be one. We cannot make this as smooth as the other shape, but it doesn't really matter. Right now I'm gonna shift select, so I'm holding shift and clicking on the pipe. I'm gonna choose a line, click on the pipe to make it the boss and line it up that way. Since the back of these do match up, Bingo, we're good to go. Now you'll notice our measurements are different. Let me show you what I did to get the shape I wanted. It's really crazy simple. All I did was change this to two and change this to five. Now when I do that, you can see it is up in the air, but if I press D to drop, it is instantly in place. All right, friends, so we have got it built. Now I need to cut in these holes. Watch how easy it is. I brought out a hole and I said I want it to be nine. I knew that would be plenty to cut through the tube. I stretched this as high as I could. I'm gonna select these and do a line. That little part I can delete, those are just scraps from earlier. So let's grab those three and do a line. I'm gonna make sure that hole matches the orange one, bingo. Now I can slide that quite a ways forward before it runs into the other shape. So that'll probably be perfect. And then I wanted to keep the groove going. Are you ready for this? Control D, Control Shift Up. 
Notice it's going super slow. That's because I had it at 0.1. Now if I do control shift up, it goes 10 times 1. When I get it up in the air, I'm going to tilt it. I'm going to say about 45 degrees. And then I can just walk this shape in with my arrow keys so that it's ready to cut that out. I'm going to change that angle a little more. Let's see how that works. Control down, nudge forward, and bingo, we have got our final shape. When you select those four pieces, notice it says four, and you hit group, you are ready to roll. This little guy prints in place on the printer. There was a little bit of a drip down here, but it wasn't enough to wreck the print, and I did print with raft. Let me show you how that works. First, of course, I am going to export the selected shape as an STL. Tube pinch fix, and then we're gonna launch Kira, and I'm gonna print this on my A10T. This is Kira when it loads, here's my A10T. Let's grab that part, I'm in my 3D modeling folder, and bingo, there is tube pinch fix. Now it automatically slices, because I chose that in the settings. 16 minutes, it's gonna print via USB, I do want to double check. I am doing 0.3 layers, 1.2 walls, 0.8 for the top bottom. 30% infill, 205 and 60. For my temperatures, print speed is 60, retraction is 16, and then bingo, this is the important one. Because I want this to be sturdy when it's printing out here, we need to have raft on and I'm doing four millimeters. Bingo, friends, it's time to hit print. so we'll shut off the printer so we can hear better as you can see that's not too bad on that front end if I lowered the temperature it might even turn out better and then of course we just need to snap off the base all right friends so there you have it a super simple solution for making sure that you're getting the right cooling for your Monport 40 watt light burn ready laser now friends if you want more information of course there will be links in the description and friends of course if you enjoyed this video please give it a like please also hit that share button so more people can learn about HL Mod Tech don't forget you absolutely make my day if you take time to leave a comment down below and if you haven't subscribed yet what are you waiting for smash that subscribe button and last but not least Hit that notification bell if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new video from me, HL Mod Tech. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.